Sarah from Magpie and Goblin and today we're going to be making a blended bat with um, some Crea and some Baby Camel, some Blue Face Lester and um, a Rainbow Silk. It's going to come out like a heathered tweed but really really soft but it's going to be muted tones against the Rainbow Silk. Um, I'll just show you what fibres I'm going to be using. I've already prepared them so here we have the Crea and the baby camel already blended that together that took a while and then some grey BFL roving and rainbow silk okie dog um, I am basically just going to blend them, um, number one, as an attempt to use up a lot of stuff that I have in my stash because I am a bit of a hoarder and have accumulated a lot of fluff. Number two, um, it's to show people that even um, if you've got things that you think, well that might not work, well the subtleties of having like a really sort of understated um, yarn with little flashes of rainbow colour and um, that can that can work really really well um, so you're not limited by having some more muted neutral tones you, everything doesn't have to be like super acid dyed really bright rainbows you can have neutral coloured yarn um, with just little flashes of colour it's they work so well and not everybody wants to wear fluorescent pink every moment of every day um, so yeah, for me, it's this is just to use up stuff I have in my stash to show everyone um, what <laughs> I ramble. I'm sorry, I like to start waffling on. Um, just what can be done with things that you have lying around and how you can make um, those things work better for you because um, I won't use the queer and uh, baby camel on its own. Um, it's it's so soft but it's really really too fly away um, for me to to want to spin on its own because there's so much um, static in it um, the BFL I, I have I have so much BFL Rovi I love BFL um, and I, I really I, pr I prefer to spin BFL to Merino any day I, I hate merino over and everyone knows that everyone's like oh like i'm not anti-merino as a sheep i just i think merino can gets done to death and um i prefer bfl as a base i do um i i think it's just a nicer spin and i think we, we can grow blue face luster in the uk and they're a great sheep they are you know, more people need to spin BFL. Just, just personal opinion. Um, I don't have BFL myself, but um, more people do need to spin BFL. And I acquire a lot of editions because things are shiny and I go, ooh, I must buy the shiny things. So I stock up on ridiculous amounts of silks, etc, etc, because, ooh, shiny. So um yeah so i acquire lots of lots of additions then they sit there in my stash and they don't get used if i can use them i will so i am going to today um blend these together because then the bfl will help tame the the flyaway sort of crea baby camel it's just it's too, it's too fluffy <laughs> And the silk, I'll just add that little pop of colour, just a little bit of a pop of colour. Um, so it'll be like a heathered tweed. It'll be, it'll be subtle, but with a bit of a bit of something extra. Um, okay, right. I'm going to start making my bat. Okay, so at first, I'm going to build up a base layer of BFL. Mm -hmm. 
and then start adding. Like that. You can see, you can literally see how fine it is. It's, it's ridiculous. It just ends up Too whiskey for me. Luckily enough, I've already put the Kriya and the Baby Camel through here several times to blend them because otherwise I'd be here forever. BFL on. Our layer. Put it Another layer of the career and baby camel. That's so fluffy. Stop being fluffy. Right. Now I'm going to start adding some of this rainbow silk. I'm going to add it directly to the, to the drum. Unlike other fibres, when you blend them, their colours tend to go a little bit muddy. Silk doesn't really blend um, too much, it stays more intact. So, even if I was to put this through several times, um, the silk would just sort of, just kind of um, stay in its own. It would break up into smaller amounts, but it would stay in its own colour. I'm going to run this back through um, like two or three times to separate the silk more, but it will stay in its own colour, and then when you spin, you'll get the little bits of silk come through on their own. <laughs> Some more of this really fluffy baby animals are too fluffy. Okay? Baby alpacas and baby camels are too fluffy. Lovely as you are. Just need something that will spin a bit more substantial without all the fibre in the air. We we'll talk a little bit about my drum carder. Um, this is the largest drum carder that uh, classic carders do. I absolutely love this. It was my birthday present last year, I know of all things. It was my birthday present last year, right? I, I said to uh, my husband, I really needed this, the, the biggest one. Really needed it. And um, 
because my other card is just too small. We had to wait a little while longer to get, to get on this bit. But it's worth it. It does fit hell of a lot of stuff on. So if you, I mean, if you're just spinning for yourself or, you know, just then you know you don't really need one that you can fit like 200 grams on but I do because we've got our own animals and I really need a really big powder So after justifying it for all of about 10 minutes, um, Graham said, okay, you get the one you need. The thing is pesto, just pesto. It's my pesto present. So cool, it's just every colour in this. Another layer of BFF. Did y'all see that little bit of fluff then just fly on it look like a fluff ghost? <laughs> This first strong because of all the fluffiness. It's getting a little bit, a little bit full. Bit of the BFL and divide that up across the across the top. And this last bit of silk. Let's get all this on.
the great thing about adding like really, really bright rainbow colours to sweet to make a heather tweed is it kind of looks like the circus came to your boring town and then threw up everywhere. Um, <laughs> it just, I really like the way that it the the actual fibre stays the same flat fibre and then the silk will stay it's the same crazy silk but it has to be together so you've got this mad clown yarn in this boring dull upper middle class village <laughs> which is scared of the circus um, but it all has to work I love that I kind of think that's how my my studio is here because the village is a conservation area and um, kind of there's a lot of people who are a bit like oh they're very weird yes they're weird we won't murder you we'll just tell that away Okay, that's all squashed down. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all that fluff off the bat and I'm gonna I'm gonna run it back into the card um two or three times to make sure everything's amalgamated as much as it can. Um so I'm gonna do the next bit on time lapse, okay? Okay, so I've run this through the carder a couple of times and as you can see the Kriya and the Camel and the BFL are all together. The silk's broken up a little more but it still stayed in its individual colours. It hasn't blended with each other which is great because that's what I wanted it to do. Um, I'll show you underneath. It's the silk is more or less exactly intact which is so cool because that will give us that heathered effect yarn and um, with these bits of silk just come flying out at you okay no boring tweed here okay some people when they spin a bat they spin by taking a little bit off at a time. I kind of just put the whole thing on my leg and roll it up and just go for it because I can't be bothered fiddling. Okay, so here it goes. spinning so nice now doesn't it look ridiculous my wheel's huge next to me if you buy uh, an Ashford County an Ashford Country Spinner too, and you're under five foot tall, this is how you will look next to your wheel. It's so funny. I think everyone who sees it's like, oh my god, I'm like next to a normal person, it doesn't look this ridiculous. But I feel like a borrower. I do. Most of the time, I feel like a borrower. Awesome. A really nice silky bit there. That's going to look so good. And 
know most people will cringe with me rolling my bat over but when I spin fibres like alpaca and um, and camel I prefer to spin them um, from the fold if I was to spin them straight from the fleece so when I when I card them I don't like to spin them in the back like a line straight down I like to spin them from this from the edge of my back because that's how I would spin them from the fold so I can fold my back over and spin them sideways um, I think it gives you a little bit more grip to the fiber because they're not very grippy fibers at least then you get that, just that little bit more of a grip if you're spinning them sideways on rather than maybe it's just me I'm um, default setting is insane so you know like yeah I'll, I'll card it all one way and then spin it from the side of it When I had blended the, the Korea and the Baby Camel, it was just too fly away to spin on here. I would have been able to do it on one of my other wheels, one of my smaller wheels. Um, but I, there's no way on this wheel I could have spun um, a single of, of that. It's just that the wheel isn't designed for that. And um, but I like this wheel, so I'll do anything that I can so that I'm spinning on this wheel and not on a different one. <laughs> it's not a bad thing to have a favourite wheel. Um, my favourite wheel used to be um, used to be Polly. Um, my um, my Haldane Hebridean. Um, she used to be my favourite wheel. Um, but due to her limited bobbin capacity and limited orifice size there's only so much you can do on that wheel and unfortunately because Haldane are no longer in existence getting extra bobbins is I'm sure someone has some rocking cross poop somewhere that you know would be easier for me to have access to. That said, right, I have recently started wood turning. So <laughs> I mean like recently I'm pretty rubbish at it. Um you never know, I might be able to sometime soon be able to start um actually making my own bobbins for um or Polly, which would be nice because I mean she does spin, she's a fantastic lace weight, but if you want anything more than 40 grams on a bobbin you screwed. I've only got one bobbin. Oh and if you want to spin anything more than ply, you know, playing two lace weights together on a, you're kind of screwed. Orifice size is just not her greatest feature. Whereas obviously everyone who knows the CS2 knows that the orifice is ridiculous. I can fit half my hand in this orifice. <laughs> but yeah, if you want a really big orifice. Orifice reducers, um, which I just I have no need for them. I like big. I 
really liking it at the moment. Every now and again I get a couple of pieces of silk that are different coloured coming through together. And as the silk's coming through, it's sort of barber pulling as a single and it's really good. It just looks so funky. And especially against such a sort of subtle background, having that insane shock of colour. I'm just watching people coming past the studio and looking in the window and I'm like hi <laughs> hi <laughs> trying not to draw their attention too much I'm like I'm in the middle of making you a video please don't knock on the door please don't come in Trouble effort. Dun, dun, dun. Those that are really, really nosy. This is the reception room of my studio, which is in the middle of the village, right on the high street. I say that like it's a busy high street, it's a busy road. But, you know, for us that's busy. And, I mean, it's the only road takes you to um it takes you up onto the moors and over to yorkshire and some people do think that technically sort of we are in, we're not in yorkshire we're still in lancashire i don't know why people get it wrong this is lancashire very much so But yeah, the, the main road takes you over to, over to Yorkshire. Which is good if you want to go to Yorkshire. Not everyone wants to go to Yorkshire. My daughter goes to university in Yorkshire, but that's only because it's actually nearer to go to university in Huddersfield than it is to go to university in Manchester. So, so she can get on the bus, because there's a bus that goes over at my worst. God, I am wittering on, aren't I?
Okay, so I um, finished spinning the, uh, the the tweed and silk. Um, adding the BFL and the silk to the baby camel and the Kriya has made it a lot more manageable. I was finding um, that the combination of baby camel and Kriya was far too fly away and um, I have um, I have asthma and I'm prone to um, like chest issues and it was far too floaty and it was making me quite wheezy um, it's just it was too fine and adding the BFL and the silk meant that it just tamed it just a little bit um, I'll just show you and you can see that um, where the silk is the colour hasn't completely separated the colour has has stayed more or less intact I'll just try and get it to focus a bit um, which is nice and there are parts where the silk you can see the colours don't blend at all and um, they just barber pole around each other so if you've got two colours of silk together they have not all Cardin did with the silk was distribute the really fine silk around around the fibre um, this is incredibly soft um, I did think about plying it and then I thought well I I spun it um, I, I wanted to have it as a single so I spun it as a single um, it did cross my mind to, to re-spin it and spin it slightly tighter to have it plied but I, I really loved it as a single and I was kind of glad that I stuck with my initial idea of, of having it as a fingering weight single which is basically what I've got look it's perfect you know I um, the the whole point of making tweed yarns for me is that right sorry about that there was a client come in the shop so I had to stop my god <laughs> they think I'm mental um yeah, where was that? Um, oh, down. Right. The whole point of me making this yarn was because I wanted to show you how um, how I specifically make a, a tweed yarn. Um, if I'm if I'm going for a tweed yarn with silk. Um, I would never usually use um, baby camel and um, baby alpaca Korea, because they are, well they're not traditionally tweed yarns are they? Um, but because they were such a muted neutral colour they look great. Um, but I really couldn't have used them on their own without the blue face lester that has been the saving grace of this whole um project and i i think there's only only about um about 30 percent of the yarn is uh bfl but that 30 percent was a lifesaver um because it managed to just give enough staple length that you could get a decent draw um it's just oh, it's so squishy sorry <laughs> just standing here like mm, fondling um it it gave because the, yeah the baby camel and the Korea both had quite a short staple length as well um so the bfl added uh even so that even though they are mixed staple lengths, it added enough so you could get a decent draw the silk added extra stability too and the BFL stopped it just being so 
can fly away and so wispy when you're spinning um, so it didn't just um, because even though alpaca and camel are both um, hypoallergenic and you know they, they the chances of being allergic to them are pretty much nil um, being asthmatic means that with them being so so fly away and so static that that you do tend to inhale the fibers which are not which is just, it's just not great it isn't um but it did mean that i could utilize them which is something i really did want to do because they were so beautiful it felt so beautiful it was just a shame that it was just so difficult for me to get anything near a decent spin um so yeah this this yarn is absolutely perfect yarn um i i am really torn now because um i I'm like, do I sell it or do I make something myself? And I have that much, uh, I have that many projects on it. I think I'll probably end up selling it. I'll go on our Facebook and I'll sell it. Um, so yeah, you'll have like pre-fondled yarn. Um, <laughs> but I, I just wanted to show you all that even if you're faced with something that you might think is like unspinnable um because it's either too short a staple too like too soft too fly away that adding just a few things it's really you know but usually if i was going to spin a tweedy single i would just use a, a regular british sheep fleece and mix with some silk because it would just be easier it would be so much easier. Um, I mean, imagine like a, a wonderful Shetland, um, like a Morit sort of colour um, with some little bits of, of silk. This looks like it. Handles a hell of a lot softer. Um, what I had to put in. About five times more effort to get this yeah <laughs> is worth it if you've got a lot of really beautifully soft but fly away static fibers yeah and you do end up with an amazing quality yarn you just have to weigh the pros and cons um this is like neck in fact it's not just next to skin soft right it's like next to internal organs soft right um there's there'd be no worry about like oh is it going to irritate is it going to rub right you could actually like have your kidneys removed and replace them with this and i don't think the rest of your organs would even mind they'd be like oh this is so soft i don't need kidneys um i mean obviously you do need kidneys but I'd be willing to risk it, you know, I really would, because it's that, it's, ah, ah. um, okay, so as always, if, if you like what you see, hit like, if you want further, uh, videos, in, you know, minor meltdowns, wonderful ramblings, and then hit subscribe if you want to follow us on Facebook, you can do, on Instagram. Um, I do have a Twitter, but yeah, I never, on, I can't remember the last time I was on Twitter, so you don't have to follow me on Twitter. Um, yeah, look for Magpie and Goblin on Facebook and Instagram. Um, you can follow the studio, Soul Candy Studio on Instagram. Um, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you soon.